some of the optical illusions are just stunning. Some of those birds look like they are flying in the space in the cube. You can arrange this effect to be looking from the inside out. And you don't have to have it oriented as a cube. You can do this kind of splayed display. This is a bit of green screen footage of a juggler. Some more green screen footage and I'll need to go over this a little bit more. Notice the shadow in this one. This is the drop shadow effect that was introduced with Final Cut 10.0.6. And watch carefully. Those fountains start looking like they take on depth right through that turn. There are three versions of this effect that I've bundled together and they're based on a preset starting position. My original project was this. You load it up and it's basically the flattened video. This version is designed to be folded up. You don't see those folds right now because they're behind the front. I've left the flanks in there. Uh, their parameters are at the bottom and you can just slide them down, slide them up if you like, slide them to the side, something like that. It doesn't matter. The second version of this effect is with everything folded up. It's called Video Wrap Cube Closed and this is the starting position here. This is just for convenience for you. You can see. That it's already set up. And the last one, Video Wrap Cube Preset 1. And so this one is, things are folded up and it's oriented to the center of the screen with a little bit of rotation on it to be used as a starting point. So the first section of the parameters for this are the camera parameters. You have an angle of view. There is a near plane and if you zoom that out you can cut into the cube from between the camera and the cube. And you can set the fade. And you can see as you move the camera or the Z position, you're cutting into the cube. There is also a far plane very high number moves the plane way far back and it's not likely to interfere with the cube but at a certain point if you keep going back into Z space the cube will disappear like behind a curtain and so if I set this like this turn down the far fade and start going backwards you can see that the cube is consumed from the back side to the front. Position and rotation are fairly self-explanatory. And below that are the fold parameters. So I'm going to reset this, take the fades off, and there's a back fold. The left and back fold, you 
can see that the back fold is always attached to the left side. So that can come out. There's a right fold. There's a back top fold, which right now is invisible, which leads me to this next section. You can set the opacities of these top and bottom sections separately so that you can specify exactly which panel you want to have displayed when the cube is closed. Like that. The same thing for the bottom. And like I said earlier, you have these flank control positions. You can also rotate the flanks. So if I bring the Y back up to normal, which would be zero, I can rotate this plane in space. Now the flank sides are separated from the three-dimensional aspects of the cube so that they behave in different planes of space. You'll just have to play with it to figure out what that's about. They're not meant to really be displayed when the cube is active. So that's a basic overview of the various parameters and you have three starting versions depending on your preference. Okay, I said I'd get back to this one. So, this is the full screen version and if you were to add the cube to it, uh, just use the preset here. This is not exactly what I wanted to have happen for this effect. because you see that the top half of her folds across the top and I actually just wanted the figure to fit inside one of the faces of the cube. So if I were to go to the transform scale and scale down the video, it scales down the cube too. And it's going to scale the effects with the video. So I'll undo that. So the way to do this, if you need to scale the video and apply the effect since this isn't the drop zone, it's actually the storyline. Oh, I'll just go ahead and undo this. Is to turn this into a compound clip. And I don't like the way this changed. And now I can go into the compound clip into the timeline and transform the video down. And I was about 47, so let's go down to around 50 here. And then back in the storyline, select the compound clip and apply the cube to the compound clip. And you see that the subject now fits in a face. Of course, that's going to affect how the top and bottom work, but depending on how you want to use this, since I've got the background keyed out a lot, top is not an issue generally. So I'm actually unfold the tops. Or you could scale it a little smaller, but that's what I needed to get back to, that if you want to resize the video for a particular effect, the way to do it is to create a compound clip, go into the timeline for the compound, resize or reorient your video, and then apply your effects to the compound clip in the storyline. And that way you get the video reoriented and resized fit inside your effect. So I hope you enjoy using this, and I will pitch you on the next one.